Welcome back everybody, and this is our first lecture, where we will be downloading our things that we need in order to start hacking. So basically, as I said in the previous video, the introduction video, we will be needing two things. One is VirtualBox program, and the second one is Kali Linux distribution. So here I am on both of these websites, as you can see. So just open up your Google Chrome or Firefox or Internet Explorer, whatever search engine you are using, and type in in the search bar VirtualBox. It should lead you to this page, where you just click on the first link, which is VirtualBox.org. And basically, as you can see right here, we have this green button that says download VirtualBox 6.0. Now, at the time of recording this, the version is currently, as you can see, 6.0, but when, when you will be watching this, it might be a higher version, depending whether they uh, upgrade the version or not. So, just click here on the download VirtualBox 6.0, and it will lead us to this site where we can choose our platform. Uh, as you can see, right now I am running this on uh, Windows 10. So basically, here I will click on the Windows hosts, since my operating system is Windows 10. If you're running this on Linux, which I honestly doubt, you can click here on the Linux distributions. Here you also have OS X hosts and Solaris hosts. But since I'm on a Windows 10 machine, I will be clicking on Windows hosts. And as you can see, it started downloading the setup program for the virtual box. It is uh, 210 megabytes large, and it will take me some time because my internet is not that fast. It is around one megabyte per second, so this will take around three minutes. Now, while this is downloading, we will go to the Kali Linux page, which is simply just type in, in the search box Kali Linux. I mistyped here, it should be Kali Linux. Here we go. And it will lead you to this first link right here, which is Kali Linux Penetration Testing and Ethical Hacking Linux Distribution. Here we can see the developer, which is Offensive Security. Initial release was on 13 March 2013, which was five years ago. So we just click on the first link, and it will lead us to the official site of Kali Linux. Now, what we want to do, we want to download the distribution, so we just go here on Downloads, Download Kali Linux. And basically, it will give us a bunch of these options, a bunch of these different versions of Kali Linux. Now, the two versions that you will be interested in are these two. Whoops, I selected more than one. These two, basically Kali Linux 64-bit and Kali Linux 32-bit. Now, my machine is a 64-bit machine, so I'll be downloading the 64-bit Kali Linux. But if you're running this on a 32-bit machine, you can download the Kali Linux 32-bit version. They're basically both around the same size. The 32-bit is a little bit larger, I don't know why. But both are around 3 gigabytes large. The current version of the Cal Linux is 2018.4. So, as I said, in the time of you watching this, it might be a higher version. So, we will just click here on HTTP. You can download over torrent if you want to, but I will download through my browser. And I'll just click here, and it should start the download for me. Now, as I said, my internet is really slow, so this will take around six hours for me. So, uh, we won't be waiting that much, so I will just cut the tutorial until this uh, download finishes, and we can continue from there. And as you can see right here, we got the two files that we need, the VirtualBox setup program, and the Kali Linux ISO file, which is our file, which is our operating system that we will install. So, first of all, we will install the VirtualBox. So, just double click on the file that you downloaded, and it should start up a welcome box first. Here we go. It says, Welcome to the Oracle VM VirtualBox. Basically, this is just a welcome message for you. We will cl just click Next right here, and it will lead us to this setup window. Now, if you want to, you can change here things, but I really don't like to mess with this stuff. It's basically already configured, as you will need it, so I won't change here anything. I will just go on the next. Here on this window, you can just check if you want to make a desktop shortcut, or if you want to create start menu entries. Basically, I just leave all of these checked. If you do not want desktop shortcut, just uncheck it, simple as that, and we can proceed to the next step. 
Now, this is a warning that pops up every time you install the VirtualBox. It basically says that uh, in, while installing, you might be disconnected from the internet, which hasn't happened to me, and I install this like a lot of times. So, if you're, it might happen to you. So, if you are running this, or if you're running anything important in the background over the internet, you might want to wait until that download or anything you're doing finishes before you press yes right here. But since I'm not running anything at the moment, I'll just click here yes. And we can click here install to begin the installation. Now this might take a few minutes, around five minutes I believe. That's how it took for me last time. So I'll just wait until this finishes and I will get back to you as soon as this is done. So here we are, it finished the installation process of the VirtualBox. Now in the point of installation it asked me for administrative password, so it probably asked you as well. Just type in your administrative password and it will continue the installation. We want to check here the start of the VirtualBox after installation and we just click here finish. So right now it should open us up uh, a window with, well, first of all you won't be having any of these machines right here. These are just my machines that I previously made, even before the installation in the previous version. So you sh won't be having any of these Kali, Kali Linux, Windows 7 and any of these machines right here. This will all be empty for you as well as this. Now what we want to do, basically we want to create a new machine together. So just find uh, wherever on your version of VirtualBox is this blue button, which says right here new, click on it. And it will open this little window right here where it will ask you for the name and the operating system you want to install. So basically I'll just name this uh, ethical hacking machine. You can change the machine folder if you want to. It is saved right here for me. But we do not want to install the Mac OS, we want to install Linux. And for me it automatically puts Oracle 64-bit, which I want to change since Kali Linux is a Debian based uh, distribution. So I'll just found Debian 64-bit, since I installed the Kali Linux 64-bit version. Once you check all of this, and once you make sure it is Debian 64-bit, we can continue on the next step. Right here it will ask you for your memory size that you want to use, basically your RAM memory, which you want to give to this machine. So for example, I have 8 gigabytes of memory, RAM memory, and I will give around 4 gigabytes for this machine, which means that I will be leaving the uh, rest of the 4 gigabytes for my main machine to run. Now be careful, here you do not want to overgive the RAM memory, because it might make your PC a lot slower and it might make the um, virtual machine unusable. Basically, it might even crash your PC if you just put in all the RAM memory for your virtual box machine. If you have around 4 gigabytes of RAM, 2 gigabytes will be more than enough for your virtual machine, but just in case I'll put here 4 since I can leave all, uh, since I can leave the other 4 for my main machine. So, Right now, I will click on here next after putting 4 gigabytes of RAM. And it will lead us to this window where it will basically ask us for our hard disk. Now, it will, it says, his, uh, says here the recommended size of the hard disk is 8 gigabytes. But later, when it gives us that option, we want to change that. We want to increase the size of the hard disk for this virtual machine. Now, uh, here it asks us if we want to create a virtual hard disk now or do not add a virtual hard disk. You want to check here the create virtual hard disk and proceed with the installation. So here we click create, hard disk file tab, virtual box disk image we want to have checked. So just check the dot here on the virtual box disk image and click on the next. And basically here where it asks if you want to make your hard disk dynamically allocated or fixed size, well, it depends on you. Fixed size will already use the entire memory you gave to the hard disk. So basically, if I give 20 gigabytes of memory for my hard disk, it will already uh, mark those those gigabytes as used. Well, if you pick uh, dynamically allocated, it will just fill in as the time goes. So basically, it won't 
allocate any memory for your hard disk, it will just dynamically fill in while you install some of the files on your VirtualBox machine. So because fixed size takes a little bit more time to create, we will just click here dynamically allocated, but you can put here fixed size as it will make your machine a little bit faster. But right now I will just click on dynamically allocate and click on next. So here it asks us for the size of our hard disk, which is preset with eight gigabytes. The recommended size is at least eight gigabytes. I'll put here around 30 gigabytes for this virtual machine, but around 15 or 20 will be more than enough for you since the files of Linux are not that big and we won't be downloading any major files, possibly around gigabytes large. We will be only downloading around few megabytes, big files and so on. So I'll just click here on 30, let's see, 30, well, we can leave on 29.9 and click on create. Now, as you can see right here, it created the ethical hacking machine for us or whatever name you put it. And it is currently in the state of powered off. So what we want to do before powering on the machine, we want to give it the Cal Linux ISO file that we previously installed from the Cal Linux page. We want to plug in our operating system. And how do we do that? Well, basically just click on your machine, which in my case is ethical hacking machine and go here on settings. It will open up this uh, window with a bunch of different settings, as you can see, general system display storage. Well, basically let's go on through all of this. It's here in general is what we set at the beginning. So Linux Debian 64, advanced snapshot folder and shell clipboard, drag and drop. Well, basically these uh, options right here allow you to drag files from one for your, from your main machine to your virtual machine. So you can just take here the folder and drag it onto the desktop of your virtual machine, which I will show later. We do not care about this now. Now disk encryption, we did not put any disk encryption and we won't put until the advanced section. Basically what disk encryption means is that um, you will encrypt your entire hard disk of the virtual machine. So even if someone knows your password to log in, it won't be able to unless, in, unless he knows the password of the encryption. Uh, the encryption I believe is used is AAS at 256 bits, I'm not really sure. And it basically encrypts your entire operating system and all of the files you have on your PC, or in this case on your virtual machine. We will be covering the disk encryption in the advanced section when we will be downloading, when, uh, when we will be installing Cal Linux again, just with the disk, disk encryption enabled. So now we go to the system and here we can see our base memory, which I set on four gigabytes of RAM. You might have set on two gigabytes, which is also enough. The processor part. Now here, if you want, for example, I have four cores on my CPU. And uh, here it gave automatically only one core to my virtual machine, which is more than enough. But I like to put two because it makes it work a little bit faster and it might help in some use of other programs later on. Down here at the, on the execution cap is the amount of percentage that you want each CPU to use. So basically if I put here one CPU and 53%, it will only use the 53% of one of the core of my quad core CPU. So I'll just put here a hundred percent and two CPUs right here. One second. You do not need this much. One, one core is more than enough for this. But if you want, and if you have more cores to spare, you can set here too. On the display, we don't really care about this. And here on the storage, we want to insert our Cal Linux ISO file. Now under the controller IDE, we can see the disk with a plus sign. Before you click on that, we want to go to this empty right here and right click, remove attachment. Now, if you, now it will ask you if we are sure to delete. Yes, we are, remove. And now uh, under the controller IDE, you click on the disk with plus and you click here on choose disk. It will basically open this up and it will ask you to search for the Cal Linux ISO file. We saved it right here. For me, it is right here. For you, wherever you saved it. 
So I'll just click on choose this one. And right now we have set our operating system and we are good to go. So for, uh, for this time, out of this, um, the other settings don't really matter for us. We will be covering after the installation, the network part of the settings. But for now, we're good to go. So if you have this set right here, just click OK and you are ready to start the machine. Now I will continue the installation of Cal Linux in the next tutorial. So I hope I'll see you there. Bye.